Good morning, everyone. Ready for that omni consumer customer journey? We're going to take it right now. We have a dream team of panelists. And I have to say, as a, as a dad of a daughter, this is the world I want her to live in, you know, where you literally have a panel <laughs> of entirely women leaders in the space. Yes. Yeah. Go pal. <laughs> so it's a great privilege, a great privilege well, to be you. with you here. Um, I just want to say, um, thinking about the yeah. omni consumer, who is that? You know, we start out our morning, you're asking Alexa to read you the daily. You then, uh, you're then maybe doing a little wordle between Zoom calls. <laughs> you are um, reading HuffPost over, over a bowl of cereal. And then at the end of the day, you're sitting down, collapsing in front of the TV, CTV, and you're catching Big Sky and maybe uh, you know, the women's freestyle last night. And in my house, you're also, like David, sharing some TikToks. So this is the Omni consumer. This is us, right? And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Um, I just want to just share who's on the panel. We have Sneha Thomas, Vice President Product Management at Yahoo. We have Jen Sock, <laughs> third, uh, third down the way there. She's uh, Executive Director of Advanced TV, uh, publishing in local and audio. There's nothing you don't do <laughs> at Group M. <laughs> Correct. Shannon Reed, she's Senior Vice President at and Head of Media at L'Oreal and Lisa Howard, Senior Vice President of Advertising at the New York Times. If you would, just take half a minute, say what you do, because this, this panel, the power of the panel, comes in the cross-functional uh, world that you all live in. So Sneha, 30 seconds, what do you sure. do? What's your day um, day? I lead product management for Yahoo for ad platforms. What do I do? I build products. I oversee all of the media investment and strategy for L'Oreal in the US. And our purpose is to create the beauty that moves the world. My purpose is to create the beauty that moves the world through advertising and media. I'm taking all of the channels that you mentioned before and trying to make them a bit more digital focused and really trying to look at the future of what's possible in some of these areas. Lisa. And I oversee sales, marketing, revenue operations, uh, measurement, insight for the New York Times. And we help brands like Shannon and, and a lot of you in the audience uh, connect with our, both our valuable audiences, but um, through the most premium ad experiences. Great. Um, let's start with the buzz around contextual. You know, when I started out in digital, the mantra was right ad to the right person at the right time. The data has changed and the signals look different. And so Sneha, I was wondering if you could set us up just share what has changed and, and how do the signals and data strategies of today, are we going to be set up for what it needs to be going forward? Yeah, so what has changed is that consumers are demanding more uh, privacy around the data that we collect. What has changed is that we have third party cookies are going away. What has not changed is that we still have to create and give personalized experiences for consumers. So that's the challenge ahead. And um, when I think about the world going forward, what data strategies would work, uh, definitely contextual. Diversification of signals is going to be key. So shifting the power of the signal that cookie was to more diverse signals to say, hey, how can we connect the consumer with diverse set of signals? I see a rise in AI and machine learning to really understand and connect with the consumer. And partnerships. A lot of intentional partnerships will come in the industry. Um, to, to make sure that we are able to provide the consumer an omni-channel, engaged, and integrated experiences. Lisa, the New York Times is a very people-powered publication. Real journalism, incredibly important voice. And yet, you're also using machine learning, AI, et cetera, yeah. to manage that context. How, what does that look like? How are you getting the understanding you need so that Shannon can partner with you and, <laughs> and, and get it right with consumers? <laughs> Yeah, um, well, I'd, I'd say that it takes a lot of people. <laughs> um, we have over 100 data scientists at the Times who are kind of building out um, our algorithms and our machine learning tools so that we can understand primarily in a couple of areas um, because obviously we're going to really have the highest standards when it comes to privacy. Everything that we're doing is first party. We have a mantra at the Times, what happens on the Times stays on the Times. Mm. And so the challenge becomes how do we then really kind of um, harness, learn, understand in a privacy safe way those insights and then um, you know, help our partners uh, 
really connect both from a media perspective, a planning perspective, and from a creative perspective. And so what um, we're focused on right now is um, really context and not and context in a, in the deeper meaning of the word. So um, we're not just talking about topics. We're talking about motivations. We're talking about emotions or perspectives. And so I think it's really important to understand that there's this this layer of nuance around context that um, that we can harness. And we've learned that through through our experiences over the last three or four years since we launched this that it's more performant than some of the less privacy safe ways to. Engage. So it's really about understanding that consumer, right, and then and then translating those insights to make sure that you have the most relevant message right. to our audiences. That's encouraging. So it's you know contextual. It's not the contextual that we grew up with. It, right. it is it is far more powerful. Shannon, um, speaking of getting in the mind of the consumer, you've got 36 brands, 150 countries, and L'Oreal is the is really aiming to be the inclusive beauty brand. But how do you translate all of that complexity and men and women, all the different skin types, et cetera, how, do, how does that become and inform your marketing strategy? Sure. I, I, we approach every consumer marketing strategy with the consumer first, right? So when we talk about the data and we talk about trying to find those audiences, when we talk about the context and we start to bring that together, I'm really trying to aim for what is the consumer experience and how am I creating a great experience through media on behalf of the consumer. So I'm taking all of these pieces that these two amazing women are talking about and building a consumer strategy that is privacy safe, that respects those consumer boundaries of not wanting us to follow them around with a lipstick that they already purchased, so suppressing them when it makes sense, about using their data in a data privacy way, but about creating an amazing experience for them and truly trying to wrap the entire thing in advertising when done well is a service to the consumer. And if I approach every media plan and every uh, campaign plan with that point of view, then I am building great experiences for them. Yeah. Jen, representing audio, video, streaming, TV, um, in a way that encapsulates the notion of full funnel, right? Love it. But yeah. when we think about what TV, CTV, and streaming start out as, it was TV everywhere. You'd have a, uh, a broadcaster that would authenticate people, you'd log in and uh, with your cable ID, mm -hmm. right? So that was, that was streaming TV back in the day and you'd watch it on your desktop. Fast forward to today, CTVs are in almost 90% of homes. You can't buy a television that's not connected. So how do you now think of that experience, the fact that, that TV is mobile also, it's also desktop, it's all these touch points. What does Full Funnel look like for you in the context of that kind of viewer? Yeah, and you know, TV Everywhere is a great example of it. We're still all over it. That's how we're household addressability is still living. So yeah. we're inside TV Everywhere, we're inside VOD, we're still on the linear set-top box with ways to connect with the consumer through their first-party data or some sort of third party. But then it goes all the way up to the top of the funnel, right? When you look at the branding video today, as we lose in um, the ability to get impressions, and as we start to bring in these new forms and connected television, we have no choice but to marry in the linear television product of old days with what we have on CTV today. But I buy CTV across all of our platforms. My direct response teams are buying connected television. So we have six or seven different touch points of ways into connected TV, be it through programmatic streams, be it through actual linear buying. We've got to find a way then to get all of those things from branding all the way down to direct response using CTV in different ways. It's not all the same, it shouldn't be treated the same. And when we buy it, we have to be very specific about how we make sure for all Shannon's brands in all those countries that we're looking at it appropriately and knowing that we're all buying into this great new platform. So that's what we're spending a lot of time on now. Can I, can I build on that? Yeah, please. I think the, you're absolutely right, Jen. Like, it is across all of these different places. The place where we struggle the most, and I know you're helping us to solve this, is making sure that we can understand where the consumer is in all of those touch points. Yes. Because the risk of over-frequency is real. And if we don't have the power to connect all of those dots and to create, again, I'm going to say it a million times, a great consumer experience, we kill that trust with the consumer when we continue to follow them around or when we over-frequency them. And I can imagine any of you who have kids in this audience who have 
watched any kind of streaming TV that's ad supported recently, they're probably yelling at you for being in this industry. I know mine do all the time. Please stop with the advertising, mom. Um, and I'm like, it's not even my ads that you're watching. Like, why am I getting yelled at? Um, it's other people's ads. Tell them to stop. No. But the, uh, the, the lack of connectivity that we currently have because the technology isn't fully connected and we as an industry haven't fully agreed on what that connected source of truth needs to be is I think our biggest challenge that we need to solve for this year. So Shannon, you just kind of, um, that's the grenade of the Omni experience. Yep. The fact that these things, systems, the buying processes, the transactional model, the marketplace doesn't talk to, it each, to, to the various parties very well. But at the same time, Sneha, you've got more data, it's more real time. Why can't we get those signals better in place? What needs to happen to the connective tissue to make it possible so that we're not over frequencying our families and then we get yelled at by, yeah. you know, aren't yeah. you advertising? <laughs> so my three year old, when an ad comes, um, she's like, change, change, this is not what I want, change to, the, to something else because she thinks it's a different show that I'm running. Um, so in, when you talk about data strategies, what, what will work in the future is obviously there is first party publisher data, which is not going away, which is going to be, you know, content is king. So that yep. in the same way, data, first party publisher data is going to be king. Um, other signals like contextual, uh, time of day, location, mm -hmm. weather, what are the different other signals that we can process, which are in a privacy centric way, but we can use AI. The power of rise of AI is still, I think, yet to come in, truly in advertising to say, hey, how can we use the AI technology to connect the different diverse signals that we have to tell more about the story of a consumer, where they are, what journey they are in, not meet them two days before or you know, to give them the same lipstick that they already bought, as Laura, uh, Shannon, Shannon was mentioning, but really understanding how to connect that. At Yahoo, definitely, you know, we are fortunate that we have 900 million users, monthly active users who use our products, who use um, our, who visit our properties, and that helps us connect 200 billion daily device signals. Um, distinct device signals, but we are able to connect them through a true unified identity. Now, connecting them across ecosystems or across publishers is going to be where that intentional partnership is going to come. Right. So how can we, as an industry, I guess, come together with standardized, privacy-friendly ID solutions that help us connect across ecosystems, across that first party publisher um, boundaries, but in a very privacy centric way, so that I'm not exactly retargeting that same user um, and creeping them out throughout the internet journey. Because that's the challenge that I'm facing, right? Because it's not Yahoo that the consumer's going to get upset with, it's not the New York Times the consumer's gonna get upset with. They're gonna get upset with the advertiser who they've now seen in both places. Always. And feeling like they've started to follow them around. So, so help, help us help you. <laughs> you realize there's all this amazing data. It's, we live in a much more data-driven media landscape, so it's no surprise the conversation we had this morning about measurement. You know, literally three different players on the stage, you know, you know bat throwing it down around what, how do you use the data? What's the right way to uh, take panels, inform what's, what's actually being delivered through an ad server? So all this calls into question, you know, what will the currency, where, Jen, where does the value get attributed? Yeah. And I'm just curious, you know, as different as those models of measurement were that we heard about this morning, what's the conversation? Do you think buyers and sellers are actually talking the same language when it comes to understanding the New York Times audience, the TikTok audience, et yeah. cetera? Based on this morning, we're definitely talking three different languages. We heard a panel-based language, we heard a machine-based language, and we heard a human-based language. Right. And that sets up where we are, I think, as an industry. So it's incumbent now upon the agency world to really set some standards. It was an interesting conversation this morning. I mean, brand safety is real. The discussion about the MRC is real. Like, we really have to be worried where we are. I run the audio group as well. I've been very busy over the last couple of weeks with the press that's coming out there. These are real things that we need to deal with every way. We have to come to some agreement that gets us just beyond panel data into something that brings us more down the path of audiences. Your audiences, your audiences, when you advertise, everybody's individual audiences, no matter what platform they're on, that's a tall order. So how do we get to somewhere today where we can at least talk the same basic language so that we understand even where CTV is, 
comparatively to where we are on different other types of platforms. Yeah. It does it does kind of um, parlay into the question of identity, though, and how much we should be tracking people right. across channels. Um, and who you partner with, right? And, and right. who you partner with. And I think, you know, I mentioned that we're going to probably be, you know, the most conservative or we really are going to hold ourselves to high standards. But, you know, the, the power that what we've learned is that the power that you can, you can, um, power of understanding that you can get by literally um, staying on your own platform and having a, a really deep well of local knowledge um, can can be enough. And when I say can be enough, I mean, you know, when it's the choice between the, the reader who doesn't really want to be followed around everywhere and they've said that to us, it can, it can be creepy to use your word. How do you kind of make sure that you're, you know, being as relevant as you can on platform? It's to understand things like how are they feeling in that right. moment, right? The context and, and, and context on different platforms means different things, right? So what does it mean on the New York Times, how you're feeling, what your motivation is for something? Those are very, very powerful and are probably enough to get great performance. And as long as you iterate pre-campaign, you iterate middle mid-campaign, and you iterate afterwards, um, you can continually improve and optimize in a way that's really smart and effective. Do you feel like you know we're in this uh, new landscape of of uh, identity resolution providers? We heard the term "clean room" this morning. What's I'm very curious um, how you all are feeling about because Lisa, that represents potentially new integrations for you. Mm -hmm. Buyers and brands are coming to you saying, "Well, can you still find my you know my audience when they visit the New York Times?" Same way with Yahoo, Sneha. What? What does this audience need to understand about this shifting landscape of providers? And, and does data still get passed you know, as in the old days as it was? Yeah, so when you think about what's coming, it's at Yahoo when we measure, today also 30% of the ad request that comes in does not have an identity. Say as that well. again. 30%. 30% today doesn't have identity. Because Firefox and uh, Safari do not have cookies. Right. So we don't have that identity. And in 2023, end of? End of, we all expect the that away. to go all the way up to 75%. Right. right? So the, the industry is solving for, uh, focused on solving for the identity piece, which is going to be the minority when, it, when cookies go Deterministically away. Yes. identified, yeah. Deterministically identified, right? So uh, at Yahoo, we are actually leaning more towards how can we use our next-gen solution. So we have our Connect ID solution for the addressable piece, the deterministic addressable. But then how can we lean in more towards next-gen solutions? It can be based on contextual. It can be based on other data signals um, to really understand the non-addressable uh, side of the inventory, right? And then if you, if you do that, uh, because of the power of AI and the way that we are training our models is how much can the 25% feed the 75%. So how, does, how do we use data intelligently to feed each, each side of the addressable and the non-addressable side of the coin? And it, when it comes to data sharing, I guess, um, you know, in, in one of the publishers who has adopted us in Connect ID, there's MediaWine, they're actually seeing 80% more uh, impression ECPM value in the non-dressable bucket. Mm -hmm. Because guess what, today Mozilla and Safari, everybody pre predominantly is ex excluding and are m moving more towards Chrome because today co Chrome cookies work on Chrome today. Yep. So I think there is a onus to test more with that live test bed that is here today, but also in the clean room scenario to say how can we uh, merge data sets but at an aggregate level to sh understand and measure more the impact of it. But I guess there, there needs to be more standards in which data needs to be normalized yeah. so that like you know, first party publishers can share data along with advertiser first party data and make, make better insights and recommendation coming out of it. So we have four minutes. I want to go down the line and ask you this. this is everyone aware what is, you know, Sneha just pointed this out, 75% of Inventory potentially, <laughs> listen to this. Seventy-five percent of inventory potentially not with a identifier as we know it today. You know, um, Shannon, what's your advice to brands and buyers in the room about how to get in front of that now? Because you still have to reach the Lancome 
buyer as opposed to the Maybelline buyer, right? Yeah, I think there's a few things. I, it, there's probably not a brand in this room or a brand that any of you work with that isn't focusing on building their own first party data, right? Connect, those direct connections to consumers, which is going to be and should be a big priority for every brand. Uh, the more you can have a direct relationship with your consumer, the better opportunity you have to create that uh, connectivity to unique identifiers in the future that are durable across the ecosystem. And right. things like UDID will be that connective tissue, we hope, something like it, if not that, uh, that'll allow us to take what we know about our existing consumer today and connect it to the ecosystem that is tomorrow. So I think that's step one, is making sure you own as much of your own first party data as you, as you possibly can. I do think step two, the conversation around clean rooms is an interesting one, the opportunity to create these clean room environments um, and understand where your consumer is spending their time would be step two. So if there's opportunities where you can bring, even if it's a little bit of your first party data, into a clean room with a partner, look for that data overlap and look for those opportunities to help build better understanding about the consumer, absolutely try those solutions out and see what they do on behalf of your business. Um, and then I would say for, for number three, let's not forget that we are trying to create experiences for consumers. And so contextual is a tremendous opportunity. And this, this kind of testing ground that Sneha is talking about that is already Safari and Firefox is a really interesting place for us to spend some time and understand that consumers don't always want to be that pinpoint at the tip of our spear, but sometimes there's an opportunity to create an aha moment of serendipity when you actually open up the funnel a little bit and create a moment of, of uh, exploration. Jen, is it an aha moment or an oh shit moment? No, it's both. Um, <laughs> Shannon, you're the ideal client, right? And, and working with L'Oreal and understanding your target audience and trying to dig deep, in, dig deep into consumers is where everybody needs to be. We have so many people out there that have a general idea of what their target audience is but may not have been spending the time. Now's the time. Go dive deep. I'm fascinated playing in the direct response world that I took over a few years ago. That one is unbelievably interesting to see the data that we have available today through iSpot and others, through TV Squared, through got everything data plus math in the linear TV world. And we're playing there. But the difference is what they're going after is a very different bottom line than what we're doing in the branding side. Mm -hmm. We need to find a way to bring some of that together. You and I talk audio all the time. My other favorite place, we've got to find ways to bring these things together to really follow the target yeah. and follow the consumer and know that some things at the bottom funnel that we're getting is going to help figure out the top. Yep. So we've got this DTC practice now. We're moving DR towards DTC, which is the marriage of programmatic and DR. It's so in simplistic in its idea, but to me that's ideal of where we need to start playing a lot more. We're going to talk audio tomorrow, but for now, Lisa, <laughs> bring us home. Bring us home. What does, uh, are you feeling good about this ecosystem now? You know, I think this is the moment where we're deciding, and, and I think what I would, would leave you with is that um, we are learning that you can, uh, do, you can be very performant if you target context and behavior, not the person, not the individual. Um, I think that's where it's going, and you know, we've, we've been concentrating on building up our registered users so that we have that local knowledge and the durability, to mm -hmm. use your word, um, to, to really offer solutions that can, that can work in a way that is on the right side of this thing. All right. First party is the big party. So thank you, thank Sneha, you. Shannon, Jen, and Lisa. Amazing. Thanks for sharing your insights. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thanks.